Glasgow, a city famed for its rich history and cultural tapestry, has recently found itself at the center of a startling transformation. Once known for its peaceful streets and vibrant communities, the city now faces a shadow of turmoil. This shift has been marked by a disturbing surge in organized crime. The streets of Glasgow, once bustling with lively activity, have become the stage for a series of troubling events. The city, known for its resilience, is now grappling with a new reality. In the midst of this upheaval stands the Lyon crime family. Far from just local troublemakers, their influence has extended beyond the city's borders, drawing attention and concern from across the country. But who exactly are these individuals? How did they ascend to such a level of power that they not only challenged, but also evaded the law time and again? Today, we bring you the intriguing story of the Lyons crime family. Their journey from minor criminal beginnings to becoming a formidable organized crime syndicate has sent ripples throughout Glasgow. It's a tale of cunning, control, and the transformation of a community initiative into a powerful criminal empire, a story that has even resonated within the Scottish Parliament. What led the Lyons from gambling to running a drug empire? Emerging in the 1950s, the Lyons crime family began as a small but ambitious group in Glasgow's underworld. They controlled illegal gambling and loan sharking in a small area of the city. With ambitions stretching far beyond their initial endeavors, the Lyons meticulously expanded their influence across the city. Over the decades, the Lyons' presence grew, marked by strategic maneuvers and a controversial foray into the narcotics trade. By the 1990s, they established themselves as a great force to reckon with. The gang had carved out a huge name and space for them in the Scottish underworld. Their rise to notoriety was fueled by a combination of shrewd tactics and a formidable reputation. However, this burgeoning empire inevitably clashed with established powers in the city, drawing the attention of a significant rival, the Milton-based Daniel clan. Before delving into the intense rivalry that ensued, it's crucial to understand the factors that propelled the Lions to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Glasgow's established underworld figures. The Lions rose to power with some authorities turning a blind eye to their activities. Eddie Lyons Sr., the clan's patriarch, was already known to the police for his illicit activities. Despite his reputation, Eddie received the disused Churnside School for a so-called community initiative in 1992. This project, funded publicly, became a front for the Leon's criminal activities. The Churnside Center operated with the support of Glasgow City Council, police officers, and politicians. The center quickly turned into a hub for the Club Boys Gang, recruiting young criminals. It was a front for the Lyons drug enterprise. It was instrumental in Lyons' bid to claim space in narcotics and arms dealing. It accompanied violence, a sine qua non of underworld businesses. Most of the names appearing in the news for perpetrating crimes for Lyons belong to this gang. Key figures like Billy Buff Patterson became notorious, involved in serious crimes like the assassination of Kevin Gerbil Carroll. Stay tuned to know more about this killing that turned Scotland upside down. Another name would be Ross Monaghan, a drug dealer who was acquitted of the same murder, but is renowned for his notoriety nonetheless. Two other club boys, Andrew Dumbo Gallacher and Brian Ferguson, have appeared in the crime news plenty of times. Coming back to the community center, which was dubbed as Crime Academy by a former counselor. Over 10 years, it misused over 1 million pounds in public funds to support their operations. The situation escalated until 2006, when a triple shooting linked to the Lions led to the temporary shutdown of the center as part of a turf war at an adjacent garage run by Eddie San Uyer's brother, David Lyons. The shooting caused the death of David's son, Michael Lyons, and left Eddie's son, Stephen, injured. The shooting incident highlighted the risk posed to the youngsters attending the school adjacent to the garage. This targeted violence could go array and hit the innocent young boys instead. However, it was not the first time concerns about the center's activities and association were raised. The locals had expressed their trepidation and dissatisfaction in this regard before the authorities received the concerns with deaf ears. In September 2000, the tragic incident of Thomas McDonnell, attacked by teenage club boys, marked a turning point. He reportedly had raised concerns about the Lions after the crime family started violent vendetta against his own sons. Six men, including prominent Lions family members, were charged for the attack. 
Intense witness intimidation following the arrests led to dropped charges against the Lions. Only McGinnis was convicted of attempted murder and sentenced to eight years in June 2001. Allegedly, at that time, having the surname of Lyons was enough to ensure acquittal. The trial remained unreported by the media at that time, but it was another ugly reminder of how the legal system fails the crime victim many times. This was the time when the confidence of the young gangsters soared high and their presumed invincibility after beating a high court rap led them to tango with one of the gangland beasts who controlled a dark corner of nearby possel called the jungle. This would be the beginning of a tit-for-tat cycle of violence that would rock the entire Scotland for two decades. But before we explore this catalyst of the volcanic eruption, let's conclude the fate of the community center that became both the cause and the victim of the said volcanic event. Coming back to the innocent father who stood up to lions in the meekest way possible, yet received the wrath of the thugs. McDonald survived the attack, but the chilling incident should have highlighted the perverse activities happening in the center. Even an investigation of the Chernside Center ensued after the attack which lodged concerns about the center's administration with the top brass, but it went in vain. Outsiders saw Lyons as a community champion, but locals knew the darker truth. But for the locals, he was a small-time crook and a schemer who was running a gang hut under the garb of the community project. Frustrated Milton residents took their concerns to the authorities, only to be met with indifference. It exhibited the extent of how hand-in-glove the local police and the Lions were working. This collusion between the police, city council, and the gangsters became even more apparent when the council ordered local primary school children to attend Eddie's Club for PE lessons. It proved to be the last straw for the Milton residents after which they decided to take the matter up with the authorities. However, their belief that the authorities would help them turned out to be a naive one, as they received the response from the police and the council. There is no evidence of criminality at Chernside. This statement became a stock response to the media inquiries and later made it to the Scottish Parliament only in retrospective manner. Despite the locals' concerns and the gang's infamy, the fund for the centre was renewed in 2005. Bridget McConnell, head of culture and leisure at Glasgow Council and wife of the Scottish First Minister Jack, recommended renewing the centre's fund. It continued till the 2006 shooting incident after which the authorities finally decided to do something about the center's nefarious reputation. The center was shut down temporarily and Lyons was evicted. The reputation and activities of the community project reached the Scottish Parliament. This would be the first but not the last time the Lyons were discussed on the House floor. The second time would be when the Parliament members discussed the Lyons association with the Kina hands. This leads us to the notorious feud between the Lyons and the Daniels, which shook Glasgow to its core. The Lions versus Daniels, a decade-long conflict that shook Glasgow. After the club boys' triumphant McDonald's attempted murder case, it was about time they would challenge the big guys in the underworld. They did it soon by engaging with the infamous Daniel clan that controlled Possel Park, which was the toughest area in Scotland. The feud ignited in 2001 over a stolen stash of narcotics, that stash came into the hands of none other than the upstart gang, club boys, who refused to return it. There was only one possible reaction and one likely outcome. The turf war had erupted and it was literally a fight to death. This dispute escalated with property damage and a series of confrontations lasting for years. Johnny Lyons was shot in 2003 and got hit in the leg. Kevin Gerbel, a Daniel enforcer, was also shot in the same year. While soaking in public funds and stacks earned from the narcotic business, the Lions forged strategic alliances to compete with Daniels. They allied themselves with a notorious Paisley-based organized crime group, OCG, that had battle-hardened members with experience of the notorious Paisley Drugs War of late 1990s. A pivotal moment in 2006 involved the desecration of a grave, deepening the feud. Retaliatory acts followed, marking significant losses for both sides. It unfolded like a scene from a gangster movie, but it was all too real for the people of Glasgow. Only a few weeks after the Bishop Briggs attack, two masked men in long black coats came inside and opened fire in the forecourt of Apple Row Motors, a garage owned by Eddie Sr.'s brother, David Lyons, in Lamhill. A few minutes of continuous firing, and the bullets had claimed the life of Michael Lyons, Eddie Sr.'s 21-year-old nephew, 
an injured Stephen Lyson, Eddie's son and the would-be clan chief, and Robert Pickett, better known as Piggy, a thug from the Paisley Drug Wars. The perpetrators of this attack were Daniel members, namely Raymond Anderson and James McDonald. They were given a sentence of 30 years, which was reduced from 35 upon appeal. Nevertheless, the shooting incident not only brought the Lions and the community center, which was adjacent to the garage, to limelight in Glasgow for their perverse activities, but also caused Stephen Lyons to flee to Spain. Then came the fateful day of January 13, 2010, when Kevin Gerbil Carroll, a brutal Daniel enforcer and son-in-law of the Daniels chief, Jamie Daniel, was shot dead in broad daylight in front of Asda Superstore. It seemed to be the culmination of the turf war between the two gangs. This event was far from the end as the conflict continued with further incidents over the years. Daniel Chief Stephen Bonzo Daniel was attacked brutally in a car chase in 2017. His car was rammed off the road first, and then he was attacked with sharp weapons. The brutal attack left Bonzo scarred for life even after undergoing plastic surgery. As of 2021, key figures like Paul Lyons continue to face repercussions of the long-standing feud. Paul was jailed for killing a man in a road rage incident in 2010. He is still imprisoned and scheduled for parole in December 2024. This two-decade-long war has wreaked havoc with at least 70 clashes between a force of 300 members each and has exacerbated the challenges of Scottish authorities that are already grappling with the city's status of claiming the highest drug-related death rate in Europe. There have been seven shootings by Daniels and five by Lyons, with one death on each side. While a supreme section of this battle is dedicated to claiming power and control, revenge has also remained its driving force. Both gangs have evolved now with multiple illegal and legal businesses. They have a criminal network of over 300 people in one Glasgow scheme alone. The turf wars have reached the prisons now, as a number of prominent gang members have been incarcerated now. This has turned the Scottish prisons into a new battleground for this lethal feud. Multiple prison shootings and incidents of violence can vouch for the transcension of turf wars into prisons. Lions on the crime map. The Lions built their narcotics empire with apparent impunity. Their influence even reached the police, with allegations of officers selling crucial information. However, this collusion didn't last for long, as the clan's notoriety transcended the local boundaries. But by then, they had developed into a powerful organized crime group. Experts identify three key elements for an organized crime group's power. Generating fear, coercing businesses, and influencing officials. They include 1. The ability to generate fear in the community. 2. The ability to coerce legal businesses. 3. The ability to influence official figures. The Lions attempted to check all boxes to build their empire. Despite their power, legal crackdowns and ongoing feuds threatened the Lions' empire. While they enjoyed immunity initially, the support gradually started ebbing away, leading to several cases against the Lions' members. The Lions have had brushes with the law enforcement in the initial years too, but were let out with minimal repercussions. The police had seized 63,000 pounds in alleged narcotic money in 2004 from the crime clan boss Eddie Sr.'s home in 2004. He was not charged for it though. In 2010, he was given his first court sentence for lying on mortgage forms. He was spared the jail term and walked free with 300 hours of community service. He had defrauded £259,000 from two lenders by inflating his earnings but got away with just community service. However, the courts were not that conducive. After his conviction for fraud, the court ordered him to pay £75,000 of his dirty money. According to the Crown, the seized amount could increase if more cash becomes available. He was again ordered to pay £24,000 in 2020 in continuation of the same probe. The post-2015 period brought more encounters of Lions with the police. In 2019, a major legal blow came when six Lions members received a combined 104-year sentence for attempted murders. They include Brian Ferguson, Andrew Gallacher, and John Hardy, who were all jailed for 20 years. Robert Pickett was locked up for 16 years, while Peter Bain was sentenced to 15 years. Andrew Sinclair was jailed for 13 years and three months. Amid the arrests and threat to life, many high-profile members of the clan have gone into hiding. 
two of which include Ross Monaghan and Victor Gallagher, who have bolted in Spain. With the majority of the high ups behind bars or in hiding and the authorities on their case, will the Lions be able to sustain their illegal empire or be driven out of the underworld gradually? That remains to be seen as this fight to death unfolds. But for now, let's dive into the account of how the Lions maintain control over the streets despite being engaged into a bloody range war. Under new leadership with Stephen Lyons in Spain, the Lyons formed a lucrative alliance with the Kinahan cartel. He resided in Costa del Sol for a long time, which is known as a criminal's playground. There, he met Daniel Kinahan, chief of the infamous Kinahan crime family, which is one of the most powerful cartels in Europe with links to other countries. This brought about an allegiance between one of the most feared Scottish gangs with Europe's most powerful cartel. Stephen is known to have moved to Dubai, which was the longtime bolt hole of the Kinahans. This alliance proved to be quite lucrative for the Lions, as their narcotic importation was now on a vast scale. In the narcotic underworld, it's crucial to get regular, safe, consistent supplies to maintain control on the streets. The Lions got that covered with this new alliance. Earlier, they were on the back foot, having had to flee Scotland and being on the defensive. Now came in the ascendancy with the powerful backing of Kinahans. This lucrative alliance brought other benefits too, as it fortified Stephen's safe haven in Dubai. It was much needed for Lyons, who has a 200,000 pound bounty on his head. You should know that the deal wasn't all about the Lyons getting favors. It was a quid pro quo with the Kinahans getting access to Scotland, covering the central belt from Glasgow to Edinburgh. Clan chief Stephen Lyons was overseeing the operations from his hideout in Spain and then Dubai. However, he came out of hiding in 2015 when his best pal Billy Patterson was caged for the killing of Kevin Carroll. Billy's imprisonment caused resentment in many Lions associates who were assured that the thug would walk free in no time. The crime boss had returned to mend the shattered friendship and prevent his gang from tearing itself apart. He escaped another hit in 2017 outside a Glasgow nightclub after which he hasn't returned till date. In 2020, the EncroChat hack by law enforcement unveiled secret communications, significantly impacting the Lions. The hack busted open the communication between the crime bosses and their associates, letting out plans of smuggling and hits at the rival gang members. Lyons was also using this secret messaging service to run his enterprise in Scotland. The hoods were unaware that their communication was being monitored for three months. Then they got the security alert issued by the company, leaving the crime hoods stricken. The hack caused many thugs to toss their modified phones, valuing 8,000 pounds in the River Clyde. The hack also led to one of the major largest narcotic seizures by Scottish authorities worth 25 million pounds. Reportedly, a significant chink of that haul belonged to the Lions. Along with the drug busts, the Scottish police issued warnings to the hoods about the risks to their life from the rival gangs. These warnings drew them out from their hideouts and made them find other places to shelter in. In the wake of the hack, the Scottish authorities orchestrated a crackdown on the gang members that caused many to go into exile or get arrested. With most of his inner circle bolted in holes or imprisoned, Stephen was cut off completely. Moreover, the hack revealed multiple threats to his life. At the same time, his powerful friend, the Irish crime chief Daniel Kinahan, also left the emirate with his assets frozen after the US imposed sanctions on him. That must have increased his vulnerability. Amidst increasing pressure, Stephen Lyons left Dubai in 2020, marking a significant shift for the crime family. From underworld fixits to civilian fixits, a failed attempt at going clean. Mirroring the Kinahans, the Lions set up a legitimate front to mask their criminal activities. In 2020, the Lions brothers launched Jeb Joinery Services, a supposed carpentry firm. Ganghood, Stephen, was listed as the firm director along with his brothers Chris and Eddie Jr. Though the firm claimed to focus on domestic construction, there were no signs of actual operations. The venture's documents show the three Lions as contract managers. While the Hood resided in Dubai, the company's house papers mentioned that he stayed in Scotland. While Stephen escaped the attack on his life and preferred to take a boat abroad, apparently permanently, his brother Eddie has survived two gun attacks. Coming back to the newly launched venture, this facade quickly crumbled, with Stephen Lyons stepping down as director within a year. For many people, 
This decision shows that the crime boss has no plans to return to Scotland amid safety fears. A few months later, Eddie Lyons Jr. applied to dissolve the firm from the company's house register. That's how the gang's foray into the legal world collapsed before it started. The Lyons are now scattered, some in hiding, others imprisoned, as they face an uncertain future. They are well engraved on the legal system's map now, with their names being echoed in the parliament, court, and police investigations. The question remains, will the Lions reclaim their former power, or are they destined to become a mere footnote in criminal history? The answer to this question remains a decisive factor for the peace of the Scottish streets. With that, we conclude our exploration of the once-powerful Lions crime family of Glasgow.